Sanya, the stunning tropical playground, a surfer's paradise. After the drama of Hong Kong, oh, and Luster's got damage. Tire. the ABB Formula E Championship continues the Asian leg of its world tour. China played host to FE's inaugural race in Beijing 2014. A dramatic end to the race. But today, the focus is 1,500 miles away on Hainan Island, known as the Hawaii of China. The city of Sanya has the best air quality in the country. And as the stars of Formula E approach the halfway point of the season, who will find the groove of this island? Who will catch the break of the waves? And who will wipe out? Hello everyone, Formula E takes to the streets of Senya for the first time in the series history as all 22 gen cars and drivers battle for the win. Five races into the 2018-19 season of the ABB FIA Formula E Championship and we've witnessed five different winners from five different teams that take the top spot on the podium. Now despite only approaching the halfway mark in the season, it's more unpredictable than ever. This weekend's race is coming from a place often referred to as the Hawaii of China. Senya is the country's most famous tropical resort and is located in China's smallest province, Hainan province. Joining me in that studio to build us up to the round six is a 20 plus year racing enthusiast, Sasha Martinengo. Welcome to the show. Great to see you, Hugo. I'm so excited about today's race. Uh, and what a beautiful place. Sanya looks like. I mean, you know, you always sit there and think of China as just being these megalopolises of, of just industrial, and then you see this uh, magnificent sort of tropical island. It's, yeah, it's they do call it a tropical playground. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating, and uh, it's a very, very tight track, so um, I expect some incredible action uh, in the 45-minute race. Now, Sasha, very little could have prepared us for Hong Kong and just how scrappy it was. Eight drivers didn't finish that race. Yeah, you know what, we, we spoke about it at the last race and uh, Formula, Formula E race on street circuits and street circuits are so difficult to, to pass on. So unfortunately you do get uh, quite a lot of rubbing and, and bouncing off each other. And I think, you know, it all, you know the cars are built very, very uh, well in the sense that they're very, very strong, Hugo. So, uh, you know, it's, I don't, from a purist point of view, I don't like to see a lot of bashing, but because of the nature of Formula E and the, the circuits that they race on, uh, it, it lends itself to a little bit of bashing. Now, we, we definitely go and talk about that 50th iconic race without talking mm. about DS Tech Cheetah's uh, Andre Lotterer. I mean, he was a race leader until the 11th hour. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got to feel desperately sorry for him. You know, Sa Sam Bird, you could just see, was so frustrated. He did have a faster car, but uh, the fact Lotterer just drove brilliantly and defensively until eventually the frustration, you know, took the, the, the best of, of, um, of Sam Bird and, and went into him and, and gave him the puncture. And unfortunately, you know, he, he lost his first victory. That's for sure. Um, Sam Bird got penalised for it as well, and, and Mortara got uh, the, the win. Mm. So we've had five different winners in the five different races as well, which is also great for the sport, you know. So, I mean, the, the championship is wide open, but the guys have to be strategic now because there are only uh, seven races left. You, you've got to start thinking of that championship now. But what do we read into the fact that we've had five races and five different winners? I mean, if we look at Formula One as a point of comparison, the frequency of the same winner is way higher. Yeah, very much so. Uh, they are two different uh, animals, that, that's for sure. But I think um, for Formula E, they, they go to these new kind of circuits and because they're so tight, and, and you'll see when we go into the racing, I mean, it, the, the circuit is so tight. The guys are rubbing basically against the barriers. And what it does is it springs up surprises. I mean, we've got Oliver Rowland who's on, on pole position today, who's a rookie in, in uh, Formula E. And it's going to be a fantastic, a fantastic race. So five different winners, I think it's just brilliant for any kind of motorsport to see that kind of uh, unpredictability. Well, let's take a look at the calendar for season five and see who has come out tops and what we can expect for the remainder of the series. Yeah, having a look, I mean, there your your five different winners, you know, uh, Antonio Felix da Costa, Ambrosio, Bird, Degrassi, and Mortara. So uh, today, 
more than likely we're going to see another another winner, a different winner as well. I mean, that would be just just spectacular. And there, there's the rest of the calendar going through. Um, this is the Asian leg, and then they're going to Europe, and then eventually finish off uh, in the United States. Yeah. Now, what can we expect in the latter part of uh, the season? Well, I think it's now now it becomes the teams have to start working strategy uh, for, for those who are in the championship. So it's a question of, you know, Sam Bird has got to sit there and say, OK, who's his, his closest rival? As long as he finishes ahead of that person, he's, you know, maintaining the championship. So I don't know if they're going to be going all out for the wins as opposed to strategically trying to sit and, and work out uh, points. Now we know London is coming onto the grid uh, in the next few months. Do you reckon we can see more countries buying into the concept? Oh, very much so. I mean, you know, electric cars, uh, the development, the technology that is happening. And this is the great thing about Formula E. You know, a lot of people got to understand that all of this technology is going to come down into our road cars. So I think a lot of people are going to embrace it. You know, London's going to embrace it. They're going to Italy and to mm. Rome. Um, and yes, it's, it's a different kind of race. You don't have this noise that's just so peculiar. You know, there's just these cars going past you. So it's, it's, it's such a different um, aspect of racing to try and understand. But as it progresses, I mean, look at these Generation 2 cars to what they were two years ago or a year ago already. I mean, it's incredible, the technology. So I think everyone's going to embrace it. How do these Gen 2 cars compare to Formula 1 cars? Well, the, can you compare them? No, you you, you, you can't really. Uh, the technology in Formula One is completely different to mm -hmm. what, what they are. They, they use electric energy in, in Formula One cars as well. But this is to sit there and say, hold on a second, we're trying to make a better planet. Mm -hmm. Um, with electric cars. So as they develop the, the battery power and um, weight, all of a sudden we, we're going to see electric cars, you know, uh, a lot more prominent in, in our driving. Mm. Now just two points separate the top four championship contenders and the underdogs continue to reign supreme. Yeah, looking at it, I mean, you can see from 54 points all the way down, you've got to say even Robin Frins is in there at, at 43, uh, down in sixth place. So there's lots to play for when it, when it comes to the championship. And, and I really I echo the, that, that sentiment that I say. The guys have to start looking at the championship now. Um, you know, guys like Lotterer and Pascal Verlein or whatever, they're going to go for wins, definitely. Mm. But guys like Sam Bird, uh, Degrassi, uh, De Costa or whatever are going to be sitting and looking at, at each other to say if I'm in front of that person on the track I'm going to take the points. End of story. Well that is very tight at the top. Yeah very very tight and I think it's fantastic for the series you know anybody you know you make one mistake you, you, you all of a sudden uh, you know one of the guys crashes and the other guy just maximizes on those points so I think it's going to be very strategic especially with the top guys. Now, very different type of style of racing in Formula E. Uh, and drivers only seem to improve as they gain experience. Yeah, listen, you know what, let's take nothing away. These are all very accomplished racing drivers. These guys have raced in so many different series in their, in their careers. They are top, top-notch racing drivers. But, you know, as I, as I said earlier, because you're racing on street circuits, you, uh, the guys, um, it's so difficult to overtake. And today we've got two long straights and hopefully we're going to see this attack mode come, come into it. But because it is so narrow, the guys have to sort of muscle their way in, which is not the traditional way of open wheel racing. But they've got another option. So, so what, what's it going to take to actually overtake? Well, hopefully this attack mode, you know, I, I've got a feeling that uh, we're going to see some safety cars today. There's definitely going to be some, some, some action. But I think, you know, if, if you're clever enough, you, you try and use that attack mode as soon as possible, just so that you can try and stretch your legs a little bit from, from the cars uh, behind you. But, uh, you know, the, the one can negate the other. So if the one guy goes into the attack mode and the other guy goes into the attack mode, then it's level playing field again. So who's going to be strategic enough to sit and say, bang, let's, let's go for it early on in the race? And I think that's going to be a key. Now, do you see a, a gap developing in the top four as we approach the back end of the season? Um, you know, if you look at what's happening in the first uh, five races, and we've got five different winners, you can't sit there and, and predict all of a sudden, oh, well, Sam Bird's going to win or Degrassi. So 
I, I go back to it of saying these guys are starting to think about the championship. So they sit and say, well, if, if a guy like Oliver Rowland is out in front, I don't believe they're going to chase him unless all of a sudden their cars are uh, a lot better than, than, than his car. But they're going to be sitting and saying, well, where's Degrassi? Where's... Um, uh, Felix da Costa, where, where Sam Bird, where am I in position mm. to my uh, championship rivals? Now, it's not just the drivers, but the teams are also very tightly packed on the standings after four rounds. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Uh, also, I mean, there's nothing, nothing between them. Uh, the, the top three, okay, from four down, it's going to be quite difficult for them. And this is also, it's so important. A lot of people don't understand how important the team championship is, Hugo. You know, we all sit there and just, you know, idolize our drivers. But eventually, you know, it's the team that actually wants, wants that trophy. So it's, it's going to be tight, very tight. And looking at those uh, five through ten, yeah, uh, you know, these guys have got a lot to play for, you, you know, the, the guys at the bottom uh, and Nissan, uh, which is great to see, I mean, they're on pole today. So they've got a very good chance to, to elevate themselves, you know, up uh, ahead of uh, the Jaguar Racing Panasonic team. So uh, there's a lot to play for and they're, they're, this is pride. This is incredible pride, you know, you've got great manufacturers in, in Formula E. And of course, you know, Nissan wants to be Jaguar, Jaguar wants to be Nissan, BMW want to be up there. So this is a, a big, big championship. Now, obviously, very, very exciting for the fans to see close races, tight finishes. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's what, what, what we've come to expect from Formula E. The cars are all basically the same. They, uh, they, their spec is the same in, in the sense of the way that they designed as well. So there isn't really anything between them. It comes down to driver ability mm -hmm. and track position. You know, on these street circuits, track position is vital. And we saw it with Lotterer. Lotterer could just drive in the middle of the track the whole time and nobody could pass him until eventually the frustration comes out. Here we've got some longer straights. So hopefully we're going to see some, uh, some daredevil moves, that's mm. for sure. Yeah. Now, the previous circuit used in the Chinese capital was the longest in Formula E history. The Beijing track, a design around the site of the 2008 Olympic Games, measured just shy of three and a half kilometers. The 11 turn Sanya circuit, however, is much shorter in length and at 2.3 kilometers is more comparable to Berlin's Timberhof Airport Street circuit, although it bears a passing resemblance to the New York City circuit in terms of track layout. I mean, if we if we look at that uh, that um, graphic of that circuit, you've got going into turn uh, turn eight, you've got a very very long straight, and also that hairpin, and we saw it a little bit earlier in the um, Jaguar I Pace race, that it's quite wide. So the guys can actually take an option to either undercut, so, so push your, your driver, make them go into the inside, and then you actually take the outside of the, the line and hopefully undercut and come through. So I think we're going to see some great action, especially going into uh, those long straights. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the virtual circuit and then come back to a few more questions. The Sanya street circuit starts with a typical left-hander, which leads immediately into a kink at turn two. Then we have the attack mode activation zone on the outside of turn three. Next up is a long right hander that drops downhill. Putting the power down here will be very tricky. A short straight next before turn five, where there are nine surface changes before turn six takes you into one of the two long straights. This track is fast in places, but it won't be all about speed. Energy conservation will be an important factor if drivers are to make it to the end. After crossing the river through turn seven, you'll be reaching the highest speed of the lap on the approach to a fantastic overtaking opportunity. We should see a lot of position changes at turn eight, but if you're blocked by the car in front, it's possible to get a better run out of the hairpin and have the speed to overtake on the long straight heading towards the start line. Any power boost gained in attack mode or fan boost could be critical on these long straights. Turn 10 is a very fast high grip corner with a quick entry but the track narrows a lot on exit. Get that right and you'll carry lots of speed down the straight on the approach to turn 11. Then it's on the brakes for the tight left hander, the last corner of the track to conclude a lap of this 2.2 kilometer circuit. As the ABB FIA Formula E Championship debuts in Sanya, Saunders Call to Brown takes a look at the hot topics in the paddock. Can Sam Bird deal with being the hunted? Will Pascal Verline and Andre Lotter avoid incidents? And is there a chance we will see a sixth successive different winner this season?
Hong Kong saw a surprise win for Edo Mortara, which made for a fifth different winner in five races. Now that just goes to show you the calibre of driver that we have here in Formula E. It really is anybody's game as the unpredictability continues. As it stands, the top four in the championship are only separated by two points, so it's tight and every position and point really does matter. So if stakes as high as that, there's absolutely no way that these drivers aren't going to be gunning for it big time this weekend. So prepare for the unexpected. After Sandberg's win was stripped away from him after a penalty in Hong Kong, he'll be fighting hard this weekend to keep himself at the top of the standings. In previous seasons, Sam has usually taken the role of the hunter, chasing down the top spot and coming close on many occasions. But this season, things are different. The hunter has become the hunted as Sam looks to put the nearly man title to bed and show he has exactly what it takes to win a Formula E championship. Pascal Verlein and Andre Lotterer have both had race wins snatched away from them in the dying moments of the last two races. Pascal has shown he has what it takes to perform in Formula E with a strong debut so far. I feel like you're talking about me. Um, and Lotterer, with 17 races under his belt and the fast look in DS to Cheetah, there's no question that these two drivers are going to be looking for some seaside redemption here in Sanya. Lucas Degrassi, who is currently sitting joint third in the standings, has returned to form after a low point scoring start to the season. Two podiums in a row, including the unforgettable win in Mexico. Lucas is showing us how a calculated, yet assertive approach alongside Formula E experience can really pay off. Eyes on Lucas as he goes for three podiums in three races. Could he be mounting a push for his second Formula E championship? Finally, underdog and previous race winner Eduardo Mortara is overshadowing his experienced teammate Felipe Massa. Mortara has finished in the top five in the last three races, including two podiums, as he perfects his race craft and puts himself very much into the mix. He's definitely one to keep an eye on during the race as he looks to continue his fine form this weekend. First of all, In the first season of Formula E, we learn how electric mobility is becoming more and more popular. Five years ago, Formula E set out to raise awareness on inner city air pollution, a result of mankind's biggest threat today, global warming. 50 races in and the world has reached a turning point. The electric revolution is truly here. The series has provided a rapid test bed for electric vehicles, aiding the world's biggest car manufacturers to shift the public opinion around electric mobility. Back then, it was not a common uh, mainstream people talking about electric cars. The Formula E has helped a little bit 
or has changed some people's perception, even the manufacturer's perception. You know, it's doing its job, and at the moment, it's doing its jobs perfectly. Driven by passion for innovation and a greener future, Formulary is helping speed up the development of consumer electric vehicles as the progress in the technology made on track flows from race to road cars. With nine global production car manufacturers going head-to-head -head in the current season, the race towards a cleaner environment has never been fiercer. Big car brands now need to be part of the change in mindset towards electric vehicles. What we want to achieve is to make people love e-mobility and green technologies, yeah? Because that's the best and most powerful way to accelerate positive change. It's a huge step in the right direction for mobility, I think, to go electric, and Formula E plays a pivotal role there. Since Formula E's first season in 2014, there's been a 650% increase in EVs on the road, jumping from 720,000 to 5.4 million by 2018. The public are joining this electric movement in their masses. People used to see an electric vehicle as a, I don't know, a golf cart or something that was purely done uh, because of, of environmental standards. And what people are starting to see, and Formula E plays a big role in that, electrification creates more exciting cars. Now it's 2019 and 50 Formula E races on. The electric revolution is well underway and with Mercedes and Porsche joining the championship next season, the race towards a cleaner future has never been faster. Fabulous to see Nico Rosberg given his endorsement to Formula E. Yeah, I think it's it, it's terrific. You know, um, there, there's so many skeptics out there, and especially when it comes to the racing. I don't think when it comes to actually electric cars, but to racing, everyone goes, oh well, well you know, do we really need this? But this, um, you know, 51st race we're going in, into now. It's a series that has really taken off. Nine manufacturers. Next year is going to be 11 different manufacturers in Formula E, which is the most in any category of, of motor racing so I think it's it's terrific and to get an endorsement from a, a Formula One world champion is very very uh, it's critical to the six uh, the ongoing success of Formula E. Now over the last few days some big news has come out in the world of Formula E. Andre Lodra says he ignored Sam Bird's initial attempts to contact him following the Hong Kong ABB FIA Formula E clash but has since shaken Bird's hand regarding the incident. Yeah, I mean, racing is is racing, and unfortunately, incidents do happen. It was, it, it, in my opinion, an unavoidable uh, or avoidable um, accident. But you know, the, these things do happen, and, and you're going to have so much emotion r immediately after the race. But eventually, you sit and calm down and go, you know, that's racing. Um, you know, fair, fair, fair dues, but Lotra's been racing almost three years in Formula E. He doesn't have a W to his name. He's on the verge of it, and this oak takes him out. Just how much effort did it take to shake his hand? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's so frustrating. You want that when you're so desperate for it. You, you're a lap away from it and, and you get taken out. So you feel desperate for, for Lotter, and I'm sure you, you were, we saw after the race, he was fuming. But eventually, you know, you, you have respect for, um, for, you, for the drivers off the track. Uh, when you're on the track, uh, you know, then it's that visor goes down and then it's just go racing. So, you know, there'll be no love lost between them on the track, I can tell you that. Clearly not. Now, the track for the inaugural ABB FIA Formula E race at Sanya has been specially treated in a bid to avoid the major surface breakup seen in Santiago. Yeah, listen, uh, if, if we looked at the preview a little bit earlier, uh, there are nine different surface changes uh, going into, into the one corner. This is going to be quite bumpy for, for the drivers. Braking is going to be essential over here. The guys can really outbreak themselves, especially in the early laps, Hugo, because they've got to get those tyres up to temperature. So mm. you outbreak yourself and you're going to land yourself in big trouble. Now, do you get the impression that Formula E are not really, are not entirely sure what to do? I mean, Santiago is an absolute disaster. Well, you never, you never know. Um, I mean, these are street circuits, so cars are on there all of the time. This is a different kind of load. There's much higher speeds, the braking points. So, uh, you know, tracks, tracks crumble. Uh, you, you, you can't predict what, what's going to happen. But they'll learn from those kind of things. I think this is going to be a great circuit. Uh, you know, if, if the, the Chinese, when they do things, they do it properly. So mm -hmm. I don't believe we're going to see any breakup here.
Now, Pascal Verlein has arguably been the star of the 2018 and 19 ABB FIA Formula E season so far, bolstered by his Mahindra racing surroundings that help extract his best performances. He's a, he's a great racing driver. He's a Ferrari test, um, test pilot uh, as well. Uh, he must probably trying to get himself back in, into Formula One himself. Um, he should have won in Mexico, and we saw him. He ran out of ran out of juice just 20, 30 meters away from the line. So yeah, I expect good things from, from him as well. He's a very accomplished racing driver and incredibly well respected. That's a year since he's left uh, Formula One, enjoying a new lease on life. What have Mahindra offered him that spurred him to success? A racing driver is a racing driver. They don't want to be out of a car. You know, so he could take the position as, as being a Ferrari test pilot and go and just do simulate uh, a kind of, kind of racing. But they want to be on the track. And the great thing about it is, is they sit and say, listen, let's go racing. The more time you're in the seat of a car, the more experience you gain, no matter what formula it is. And you, you perfect your, your race craft. So I, any racing driver would rather be in a car than sitting on the sidelines. Almost the green lights. We'll be back right after this. Now we're moments away from the start of round six. Sasha, what are you looking forward to at the start line? Well, I mean, we've got Oliver Rowland on, on pole, but I think the guy to watch today is Jean Eric Verne. Uh, he's had a miserable season so far. He's a, a former champion. He's a brilliant, brilliant racing driver. So I think Verne is going to really be very aggressive off the line and, uh, and, and try and try and get uh, ahead of uh, Oliver Rowland. So you reckon he'll take it today, or is it... Uh too much out there. To I think, I, you know, to, uh, Oliver Rowland, it's his rookie season. Uh, he's, he's made the last three Super Poles and, and got into his first pole position, which is terrific achievement for him. It's, it's now a question of you're at the front, you know, can you, can you get that launch? Um, whereas he's got a, a very experienced driver like jean eric Verne next to him. So it's, it's going to be very, very tight. But I, I think jean eric Verne for, for today, for the victory. Fan boost was not a factor in Hong Kong. Will it be a factor today? Yeah, I think it is going to be a definite factor, especially with these long straights. Uh, I think Massa's up there with the, uh, at the Fandoon? moment. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's great stuff and it, it gives them that extra power. And the attack mode as well, I think, is going to be very, very uh, critical today, especially with those uh, long straights. I mean, if you get that attack mode early on, you could really hopefully pull yourself quite a decent gap. Now, obviously, you know that uh, Lotterer uh, was an issue. So was it for, for Bird? How do you see the two racing today? 
they, you know what, you've got to put the past behind you. you. You can't sit there and Lotra can't sit there and go, oh, well, I'm going to get revenge on, on Sam Bird. So you could see after the race last time, Hugo, that Sam Bird was upset with himself for creating that accident. You don't want to do those kind of things. And I think it just shows you also the respect that um, he has for, for his, his co-competitors as well. So it was an unfortunate incident, but you know what, he has a new race. You can't sit there and dwell in the past. You've got to go racing. That's that's what it's about. You can see how narrow this track is. I mean, wow, these guys are going to be racing right next to each other. The Costa's a guy to watch as well. Don't forget, he's ahead of all of his um, uh, championship rivals. So uh, on the track here today. So he wants to just keep Sam Bird, the grassy behind him. Well, round six is moments away. Let's prepare for the unexpected. in ninth place and completing the top 10 is Lucas Degrassi who is trying to haul himself back into championship contention he's third in the standings at the moment Eduardo Mortara won the last race in Hong Kong he starts ahead of the Envision Virgin racing car of Robin Freins and then it is Stoffel van Dorn he started on pole position in Hong Kong but he is down in 13th today Jose Maria Lopez is 14th on the grid in the first of the Dragons Felipe Massa is driving for Venturi he starts